YouTube. Welcome to this next installment of the Evian blog. Today I thought, well, you know what, a customer's just, just, just brought in a 32 inch LCD TV. So I thought, what perfect opportunity for us to get into how one goes about repairing a television or fault diagnosing a television. And let's see if we can find the faults in this thing. But before we start, I just wanted to let you guys know there have been a few additional changes to the Evian Labs power supply, which will be uh, in the next episode or two um, released so that you guys can take a look and see what we're doing there. But for the moment, let's just uh, jump inside this television and have a look see. Now, before we, before we actually get into that, uh, the customer did report that the TV has been turned on and off by a timer every day for 30 minutes. Um, the TV was used on the coast. Uh, all these things could play a part in what the actual fault could be. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the television set, get inside there and see if we can find what the problem is. And um, from there, hopefully we can do a fix at the same time. Let's go. Alright, the first thing is first, you just plug this TV in. It's a small 32 inch LCD, uh, nothing wrong with it. Uh, we don't have a stand for it or anything like that. So what I'm doing now is I'm just taking a look-see. I don't see any sort of indication of life on this thing over here. And in fact, if we try and power it up, it's completely dead. Completely, completely dead. So the first thing we're going to do is place it here on the bench. Let's just make it safe, unplug it, and then we're going to get inside here and see what we find. Uh, I'm going to fast forward this section because it can be quite a little bit of, of, of a ball for those of you out there uh, so that this back panel can just sort of come off. We can reconnect that in a second. Let me just get this out of the way. Right, so there we got our TV set open. What I think uh, we should do now is get you guys in closer over here so you guys can follow through with the diagnosis pro progress as we go and see exactly what it is we're actually doing to diagnose the fault. So let's get that camera in a little bit closer. Right, so due to the power being dead on this specific TV, um, I suggest we do take a proper look at uh, these boards. I'm just going to bring a little bit more light in so we can see a bit better. Just give me a second on that one. Alright, we have some light coming in now from above. That should improve the situation a little bit. Right, so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start doing diagnosis on this thing uh, while recording what I'm doing. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, uh, once you've made sure that you're all safe and you know what you're doing, don't do this people unless you actually know what you're doing, we're going to check out stage by stage what's going on inside this thing. So first things first, we bring our multimeter in. Uh, now I don't have a lot of space uh, on the screen over here. For everything so for now I'm just gonna sort of gently place it over here and we're gonna switch it on to volts AC because obviously the first step in diagnosis is to check that we're getting our mains voltage in here we check out that we've got our 230 volts coming in it's obviously going through the fuse uh, so my next step would be to look, um, now I don't have a, a diagram for this thing, but the next step in my logical book would be to look for the auto, the power on signal, which looks like it is over here. And uh, let's see if we've got some sort of a voltage over there. And we should have a 3.3 volt standby arriving there. So we need to switch to DC. Let's just find a ground point. Looks like that there says ground. Let's look for our 3.3 volts. Oh, there we go. We've got our 3.3 volt standby. Uh, then we've got what it says AC off detect 3.3 volts. Then we've got our power on 
3.3 volts. Uh, auto or AU12. We've got our 12 volts there. AU12 on, so obviously when it's on that's at 12 volts. Then here we've got our regulator 12 volts, which might only be when the power is on. I don't see anything on those. TCON only. Uh, VCON NC right. So it looks like we've got power coming through here, which means I think that most of the um, actual power supply is functioning. So the next step that we need to have a look at over here is this main board over here. Now the main board will have a signal in. This is a MediaTek ARM processor. Um, MediaTek are quite well known for doing various system on chip type devices. And I would assume this would be a system on chip television uh, and media player possibly for the USB ports etc. But what we need to do now is to diagnose where the problem with the unit actually starting up is coming from. Is it a problem with the power switch? Or is it a problem with uh, something else? You know, uh, there, there, there's, there's various things that could cause it. So as a electronics technician, it becomes our job per se to find the issue. It's using traditional sort of three wire interconnectivity coming into the board over here to power the board. Uh, well, not to power the board, but to give you signaling from your side control panel. Um, Three wires, sometimes it uses various resistances and other techniques. Uh, sometimes it's completely different. But um, just to have a look at that, I'm just pulling it out. Just making sure that there is going to be a switching signal coming out of this thing. This is what I mean by your side sort of control panel. Um, it only uses a three wire signal. Um, not necessary to check this thing, but I thought, well, just to iron out any problems with any sort of switch-ons or anything like that, I may as well give it a look. Um, I'm starting to lean towards possibly a problem with the main PC board on this thing. Um, but we shall see in a short while. There's not a whole lot on that board. So if something is wrong, it's really gone wrong. Uh, but let's hope maybe it's just a little regulator or something like that. Alright, this little PC board. Yep, it looks like purely resistive based. I don't see anything fancy in here or anything out of the ordinary. Uh, a couple of little resistors, surface mount resistors in your switches. Uh, nothing complicated about that. Kind of normal for Sony. They're pretty well known for doing that sort of work. Um, and yet there's no sort of alchemy involved over there. It's all basic sort of... Uh, this resistance across this wire equals this button is being pressed and vice versa. So that's basically how these control panels work. So they don't have a string of buttons running across the TV from this panel over here for each and every switch reaching the microcontroller board or the main PC board. So let's get that back in. Right, that's back in place on the side over here. One thing I did notice now when I try to power up, the power supply had a bit of a strange sound, which was quite unusual. But anyway, now I'm going to head over to the main board and start doing some diagnosis over here. Now there's no labeling or marks or anything on this board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and look for the voltages, try and do some homework on this board, maybe flip it over, see if there's anything obvious. And uh, let's have a look see. First thing we need to do before we start digging around, unplug our mains. Hey guys, um, so I've been working on this um, Sony 32-inch uh, TV again. And I decided to take a look over here to see um, if there was anything. 
And what I did discover, it's going to be pretty hard to see on, on, on here, is there is a small fuse over there, tiny little fuse, which was blown. Um, if I try and bridge it out, then the, uh, the circuit goes to ground, the 12 volt rail on the power supply disappears, and if I disconnect it, it comes back. And when I check this track over here, which should be a 12 volt rail, I'm getting a dead short to ground. So what I'm going to do now is just check these little capacitors one by one. There's two of them that seems to be on there and see if uh, that isn't the cause of the problem over here. I get a feeling it might be, but uh, hey, these things aren't always that simple. So let's check it out. Okay, so back on the 32-inch LCD TV, I just wanted to show you guys over here. Like I say, this TV unit was dead, and um, we checked, we had all our standby voltages coming in over here, 3.3 volts, we had our 12-volt signals over here, but the TV was not powering up. What I did manage to find eventually is that down here is a small fuse. Uh, if you look here, it says F6000, 3.15 amps, uh, written over here. So if you check... It actually points to this little point over here. This is a tiny little SMD fuse which was blown. So what I did is I tested it. Um, I jumped it out for a temporary solution just to see. And then when I jumped it out, I found that this track over here, which should be positive 12 volts, because the 12 volts comes in from the power supply here, goes through this fuse into this track over here, powering various components on the board, 12 volt components on the board. And what was happening over here is as soon as I jumped it out, before I powered up I was getting a dead short on the 12 volt rail to ground. So what I did is I did, looked at the obvious few components, there's this little capacitor over here which was um, turned out to be okay, uh, I've put that back in place. Then there was another little capacitor over here. Okay, well basically we had this tiny little capacitor and uh, one of these little surface mount capacitors like this over here which was sitting across the track of it, which was sitting across here from ground to this uh, rail um, which is basically pulling this rail down so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small little surface mount capacitor in over there just um, I'm going to see in the circuit diagrams if I can see what the value was um, because the capacitor itself wasn't marked and then just replace that now after removing that capacitor um, I've temporarily bridged the TV does now power up so what I'm going to do is I don't like bridging stuff out like this. What I am going to do is I'm going to get a replacement fuse for here. And then at the same time what I'm going to do is get a replacement capacitor for here. And uh, then the TV should be good to go back to the customer. Uh, happy days guys. This wasn't a too complicated fault. Now considering everybody else was quoting the client for a brand new mainboard etc. When it was such a small little problem. Um, it's quite a sad state of affairs because, but unfortunately the TV repair business goes like that. It's quicker and easier to change the board. I was going to go ahead and change the board. Um, and then today I decided, you know what, let me take a closer look at this thing because i got some time. And um, yeah, true as nuts. There we go. We found the problem. A 12 volt rail being pulled to ground by a tiny surface mount capacitor. One tiny little surface mount capacitor causing this whole TV to be dead. Interesting. So guys, what we discovered in this power supply, well, in this television set, was that we were getting our AC mains, we were getting our 3.3 volts, 12 volts output over here going into the main board. The main board was not outputting any sort of signaling. What we did is we tested the switching. The switching was in place. There was no status LEDs. Um, we had our 3.3 volts standby reaching all the various points on this board over here. Uh, we had our 12 volts power coming in over here. Um, we didn't initially have a circuit diagram for this thing. Uh, we still don't have a circuit diagram, but I did manage to find a manual for these boards over here. And we traced through and discovered that there is a 12 volt and a 3.3 volt power rail. The 3.3 volt fuse was fine. There was a small SMD fuse over here, like I showed you, um, which was blown. That's been replaced. I didn't have a surface mount capacitor, so I've replaced it with a small little electrolytic capacitor. It's probably just a little smoothing capacitor of some sort. Uh, this capacitor here yeah, would give um, a lot more durability than the one that was on there. Um, so that's not a big deal. Um, I am now going to close up the, this television set and power it up and uh, give it a bit of a test run. Uh, so let's see if we've got it up and going. Okay, boys and girls. Here we go, the moment of truth. Uh, we're going to power the LCD TV back on. And let's see what we get. We have status change. 
we have boot screen uh, that's always a good sign we have power so what I'm going to actually do here is this TV has got a nice photo frame mode let's put it in there and check it out voila working TV happy customer win-win thanks guys take care and uh, catch you on the next round Oh, and before I go, as you can hear, there's sound coming out of that thing. Please excuse the radio playing in the background. So, yeah, happy days. Everything seems to be working wonderfully well over here. Um, we're going to let the customer know he can come through and collect. Ciao for now.